What's up, everyone? My name is Joe Cox, and thank you for tuning in to Joe C. Cox Photo. As always, we do have a new plant for the video. Second, this is an unscripted video. And third, this video will cover my own personal experiences and workflows, so there will be some things included, some things excluded. Today's video, it is an exciting one. We're essentially talking about how to start shooting manual mode with your camera. But more specifically, we're going to focus on shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Now, when I think of using my shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, each has two major components that I like to keep in mind. So, starting with shutter speed first. Shutter speed's first major component is going to be that it determines the time that your camera sensor is exposed to light. Second major component is going to be, it will also determine the motion that shows up in your photo. So for two contrasting examples, let's say we have a very fast shutter speed of one eight thousandth of a second, so very fast, but that means that your camera sensor is only being exposed to light for one eight thousandth of a second, and it is going to freeze your subject in place. Let's inversely say we have a shutter speed of five whole seconds. That means your camera sensor is being exposed to light for five seconds, and it is going to lead to motion blur. Hey you, yes you, quick announcement for the video. Did you know I make merch like coffee cups so you can always be sipping your favorite drink? Hoodies so you can always be looking stylish? Or even wall art to make sure that any room you're in feels like home? And there's so much more, and the best part is, it's always getting added to. So not only do your contributions help improve this channel and further educate more people, but also a portion of those proceeds go to supporting the Semper Fi in America's Fund. So, what are you waiting for? Go check out the link below and make sure you get after some of that cool merch. But, I love you, you're beautiful people, and always remember that. Now, let's get back to the video. Moving over now to Aperture. First major component there is our aperture determines the amount of light that is able to reach our camera sensor. And secondly, um, aperture will also determine our depth of field. So for the two contrasting examples there, let's say on one hand we're shooting at f-stop or aperture 1.8. That means that a lot of light is able to enter into our camera sensor but it is going to lead to a very shallow depth of field. Sometimes if you see that bokeh in portrait photos, which was like those really nice bright light circles behind your subject, that's a very shallow depth of field. Inversely, if we were to shoot at, let's say, an aperture or an f-stop of 22, that would lead to a very little amount of light that is able to enter into our camera sensor, but it would also lead to a deeper depth of field or compression as it's sometimes called where your background and subject look like they're almost on the same focal field. Third, and moving into our ISO now, talking about its first major or major component, excuse me, is going to be it is determining how sensitive our camera sensor is to light. And the second major component is going to be determining how much noise or grain appears in your photo. So for the examples there, if you're shooting at ISO 200, that means your camera sensor is not very receptive to light, but it also means you're not going to end up with much noise or grain in your photo. Inversely, if you bump that ISO to a higher number and say shoot at ISO 6400, that means your camera sensor is now much more receptive to light and it picks up on light much easier but you are going to end up with more noise and grain in your final photo. Last couple of tips that I do want to leave you with for shooting in manual mode is, first, I do recommend always shooting with raw file format and always using auto white balance. Um, by using both of those, it just makes the editing process go a lot smoother and it allows you a lot more options when you are editing. But as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to subscribe. I am trying to release as much information as I possibly can and all the information I've learned in numerous years of doing this. So I don't want you to miss out. But thank you guys again for tuning in, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.